Hello, and welcome to Virtual Investor Conferences. My name is John Viglotti. On behalf of OTC Markets, we're very pleased you joined us for the second day of our Metals and Mining Conference. Our next or our first presenter of the day comes from Hostchild Mining. Please note you can submit questions for the presenter in the box to the left of the slides. You can also view a company's availability for one-on-one -on -one meetings through the scheduled meetings tab found on the conference platform. At this point, I'm very pleased to welcome Charles Gordon. He's the head of investor relations for Hothschild Mining PLC, which trades on the OTC QX best market under the symbol HCHDF and on the LSE under the symbol HOC. Welcome back, Charlie. Thanks very much, John. And thank you everyone for joining us today. Let me just move these slides on. The usual disclaimer, as you would expect. And then let me go to the first slide, which is giving you an overview of our company. Some of you who may not know our company, um, I will tell you that we are a, a growing precious metal producer in the Americas, principally at the moment in South America. Uh, we've been around for a long time, 100 years of experience, well over 100 years. I think it's actually now 110. Currently, we've got three producing mines in Peru and Argentina, so two in southern Peru, and you can see them on the map, that's Palancata and Immaculada, and then we have one, and they're both 100% owned, and then we have one in Argentina in the southern uh, part of Argentina in the desert down there, San Jose, uh, which is 51% owned and operated by ourselves, uh, with McEwen Mining, with, uh, of, um, which is listed in New York and Toronto. We also have, very excitingly, a, a, a new project in construction in Brazil called Mara Rosa uh, in the Goyas state there, uh, and various projects in the Americas. At the bottom of the slide, you can see where our production is at the moment. That's around the sort of 300,000 gold equivalent ounces mark. Uh, uh, and we're producing at a cost of around, uh, around the $1,500 uh, per ounce, all in sustaining costs. And that's again in gold equivalent ounces. Uh, and you can see our metal split. We do produce both gold and silver. At the moment, it's um, skewed towards gold. Moving to the next slide. Some recent highlights. Uh, we had H, uh, our first half highlights from uh, just over a month ago. Uh, I think a pretty robust uh, financial performance. Um, the second item I think is, is a sort of key issue that's been facing the company over the last year, which is called uh, the Immaculata Mayor, as we we put it for short, but that's actually the modified environmental impact assessment. Um, that, that is a permit that was approved finally in early August, a little bit delayed, but I think the market had been waiting a long time for that and we've managed to achieve that. So that, that was a very key highlight for us recently. Mara Rosa project as the one I talked about in Brazil is, is going very well. It's progressing on time and on budget. Um, We've also just restarted our brownfield exploration, which had been delayed because we were waiting for that particular permit in Peru. And uh, probably uh, almost as important as anything, uh, we appointed a new CEO, who um, Eduardo Landin, who took over from our, our old CEO on the 26th of August. So lots of change here. Um, you can see on the right hand side some of the metrics revenue in the first half was just over $300 million. EBITDA was about $100 million. Currently, at the end of June, we have uh, 94 million in cash, and you can see some of the metrics on costs. Um, and our target for this year, as I mentioned at the beginning, is, is just a, between 289 and 303,000 uh, gold equivalent ounces. We've got a very exciting future, and it's a nice and simple story. Uh, and of course, we believe it's very, very undervalued. Uh, I mentioned the fact that Immaculada, our key mine, our main mine in Peru, uh, has just had its permit extended for another 20 years. Uh, and that's very, very important for us. Uh, we've been waiting for that for, for many, many months. Uh, Mara Rosa actually is also due to have, and that's the, the project in Brazil, first production in the first half of next year. We're only three or four months away. So that's very exciting. We've also made a discovery in the last year, uh, uh, quite close to one of our mines, Palancata in Peru. Uh, this is the Roy Rapata deposit. Uh, very high grade, uh, nice wide widths, uh, and uh, that's a development we're going to be um, de um, doing over the next two to three years. Um, so we think it's a pretty exciting time for uh, for Hoss Shield, uh, and we've got the permit out the way, and now we can concentrate uh, on growth and development. So 
So I mentioned this uh, modified environmental impact assessment at Immaculata. Immaculata is our flagship mine. It's been in operation uh, since 2015, a very good production record. We've always hit our guidance every year, uh, obviously, ex except for COVID. Um, and, uh, but this year, obviously, production was slightly impacted by waiting for that permit. The revised guidance is, is as I said, uh, between 190 to 200,000 gold equivalent. Answers at an all instinct of 30, 1980. Uh, and you can see that this one is very much in the Peruvian Andes, nearly 5,000 meters uh, above sea level. Uh, and this is a huge land package um, of, of exploration potential. So there's a, there's a real potential for us to do a lot more exploration um, to increase production and reduce costs by finding further high grade resources. Uh, so this is really our cornerstone mine and, and the most important asset we have. Move on to the next slide. We do have the other two assets, Palancarza, which has been in operation, is quite close to, uh, sorry, since 2007, and is close to Immaculata, about 30 kilometers to the north. Uh, we are expected to place that on temporary care and maintenance in the fourth quarter of this year, uh, and then we will wait two to three years to receive a permit uh, for that Roy Rapata deposit, which is quite close by. Uh, and then um, that plant that is attached to Palancarza will reopen again. Um, uh, this year, it'll produce around between 2 to 2.2 2 uh, million silver equivalent ounces uh, at all in sustaining costs between $26 and $28 an ounce. Uh, this is more of a silver deposit. Um, Immaculata is about 70% gold, 30% silver, whereas Palancata is the other way around. I should emphasize, I think, that the, the company is ambivalent between gold and silver. It really just depends what we find in terms of geologically. Uh, some of our mines are more silver, some are more gold. San Jose actually is a good example. That's in Argentina, and that's half silver, half gold. And it's also been in operation since 2007. We've continued every year to replace reserves there and replace resources. Uh, we found 20 million ounces of resources. Uh, that's in silver, obviously, um, in 2022. Uh, and we're continuing the drill program this year to find more ounces. Um, you can see the sort of production level. That's 100%. But this year, we're going to produce between 12 to 12.4 million silver ounces at, at, at an all in sustaining cost of between 19 and $20 uh, an ounce. Um, I think one other thing to watch for is just the Argentina elections. Presidential elections are coming up in the next few weeks. Uh, and you may, may see some sort of improvement uh, to economic conditions, which could have an impact on this mine. Uh, so that's certainly something to watch, watch out for. Moving on to the next slide. Mara Rosa, I've mentioned, is our new project, our new mine that is very close to production. It's in Brazil, uh, which is a new jurisdiction for us, uh, and it's in the Goiás state, uh, quite close to Brasilia, which is the, as you may know, is, is the capital of Brazil. Um, it's a very mining friendly, mining friendly jurisdiction. We've had an enormous welcome from all the local government and the local people. And we're very, very excited about this. This The, the economics, as you can see from the um, uh, the chart here are, are very robust. You've got a 10 year mine life here, potentially from um, starting from next year. Production will be about on average for the whole of the life of the mine, about 80,000 ounces of gold per annum. But the first four years should be around 100,000 ounces per annum. Uh, the all in sustaining costs, very, very competitive at $1,000 an ounce of, of gold. Uh, and this is purely a gold mine. There's no silver here. CapEx, we're on time and on budget. The CapEx for the um, uh, to build this mine has been $200 million. Um, and over the life of the mine, the sustaining capex will only be about 40 million spread over those years. And it's got a good return as well. You can see the after tax IRR uh, between 18 to 20%. And there's great potential in the surrounding area to find uh, more life of mine and, and uh, ounces. Um, we've listed some of the areas there in the back of the presentation, you can also see a map. Uh, just a picture there of our um, uh, of the build going on at Mara Rosa. Uh, project progress. This is a little out of date, actually. We're up to 96% now. Uh, and as I said, it's on time and on budget. We've got all the quick key equipment in place. Uh, we've started pre-stripping at the actual mine. Remember, this is an open pit. Uh, whilst our other mines are underground, this is open pit. Um, 
we have construct started constructing the uh, the dry stacking um, uh, tailings area. All the civil works are done, uh, and we're really down to just now instrumentation uh, and assembly within the plant. Um, so we're very excited by this. Um, all our ESG programs have been going on uh, 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 very very well over the last couple of years. Um, uh, we've been uh, very steadily ramping up acquisitions from local suppliers. We've got over 300 people uh, employed at Mara Rosa from the near, nearby towns. Um, so a lot of progress has been uh, going on here. And um, as I said, uh, only a few months to go before production. Looking at the next slide, it, it does have a real impact, this mine, uh, uh, on, on Hoshil, the company. Uh, it increases our reserves by 75%, as you can see. Uh, a production goes up from around the 300,000 uh, mark, which we're predicting for this year, uh, taking it to 400. Um, and it's, a, as I said, very, very attractive costs. Our costs uh, at the moment as a company are around the $1,500 per ounce mark, and this is going to be at 1,000. So, um, you know, this is going to really improve our portfolio. Just moving on to our exploration in Peru, um, both Immaculata and the Palancata mines are in this extremely um, rich uh, mining district in Southwest Peru. It's, it's been in operation for us since, uh, for, for now, for 20 years. And uh, we've produced 3.4 million ounces of gold, gold equivalent um, material uh, in that 20 years from three different mines. Um, and we still think that there's huge potential to discover further ounces in the area. And I mentioned the fact that Roy Rapata next to our Palancata mine has been our latest discovery. But there are further targets in Immaculada, in Palancata, as you can see up to um, the uh, north, um, northeast, the Condorillo target, and various other areas. So it's a great mining district for us. And I think it's important for us to invest in districts rather than simply veins. These are all vein deposits, and it is a sort of district potential you're looking for. Immaculata, obviously, we've just restarted after receiving that permit, which gives us extension for, for 20 years. We've just restarted Brownfield exploration. We'll be doing uh, around 10,000 meters of drilling uh, towards, well, really for the remainder of this year and early into next year. Um, you can see all the veins. If you look down to the bottom, um, well, to the south um, southwest of the uh, chart on the right, you'll see the Angela vein. Now, that's the original vein that this mine and the plant were built on. Um, the main vein that, that started it in 2015. And you can see since then, and that was the, at the time in 2015, that's the only vein we knew about. So you can see how many more veins have been added um, to the um, mine plan and how many more we also think exist and we'll be doing the work on over the next few years. Uh, and that permit has given us the license to be able to do a lot more exploration. Um, so we're really excited by this and, and we've already discovered uh, uh, over 3 million ounces to, since we started uh, the mine, as I said, in 2015. So lots of targets for us to be getting on with, uh, hopefully to continue to increase the average reserve grade here. And of course, that means to reduce the costs of mining. I talked about this Roy Rapata discovery. I'm not going to uh, spend too long on these charts, but it is just to the, um, the west of the, the old Palancata mine, which I mentioned was likely to go on care and maintenance uh, this quarter. Um, unfortunately, it is outside the permitted area, so we have to apply for a new permit from the Peruvian government, uh, and we expect to get that uh, in the next two, three years. The permit to drill and further drill uh, uh, this new area will be received uh, next year, in I think about April, May. But in our first drilling campaign, we found 50 million ounces here of silver, and you know that's a, an enormous amount to find in in one drill campaign uh, and this it, you know this this structure all these structures are open to the west so there's a lot of potential to find more and if i go to the next slide you can see that the 51 million ounces as i mentioned right at the beginning is has very nice widths to the veins five five meter, five meter average width and uh, about 850 grams a ton of silver so this is high grade material um the whole Palancata mine has, has had a, a production history that goes up and down. And, and this is one of the characteristics of these narrow veined epithermal deposits is that they do go on for many, many years. I should cite, um, we had uh, our, the Arcata mine, which was the first mine that Hoshield operated in, uh, and started production in 1964. 
and it only stopped production in 2019. So as I mentioned, you, you are investing in districts and whole vein districts. So uh, these mines do go on and on and on, even though sometimes their formal uh, life of mines, so their formal um, volume of reserves is not that large. Um, so Roy Rapat is going to change this mine once again, and effectively is really going to be a new mine. We've already got the plant uh, already there, so we don't have to invest in that. We've got all the infrastructure pretty much in place. So for us, this is the best bang for your buck you can get um, uh, investing in Brownfield. Uh, there is also the Vulcan deposit. Vulcan is a, a very large gold deposit, deposit in Chile, uh, which we bought 10, 12 years ago. Uh, it's in the Maracunga belt, which is uh, a, a very popular belt with many other companies, as you can see on the right hand side. Uh, it is too big, this project for us. Its initial capital uh, is around 900 million. We've done a little bit of work on it over the last couple of years. We separated it out into a separate company. Uh, it has a CEO who's been working on it and updating a lot of the numbers. Uh, and as I said, the initial capital is, is, is very large, uh, but some pretty good um, returns, as you can see. Uh, and we're looking at opportunities for what we can do with that. We did sell uh, a royalty on it to Franco Nevada quite recently, and we're looking at the strategic opportunities. So potentially that could be a sale or even a listing uh, of the tin and gold core, as it's called. Uh, but Vulcan in northern Chile is a very interesting project, but probably not one for us at the moment. What about our balance sheet? Our balance sheet is obviously uh, very important to us. It's been financing all of our, our growth in the last few years. Uh, I mentioned about the construction capex being on, on time and on budget at, at Mara Rosa. We've already spent 127 million there. Uh, we've got 73 million to completion. Uh, I suspect about 53 million of that will be this year and then um, uh, for the second half of this year and the rest of it uh, probably just in early in 2024. Uh, the cash balance I've mentioned is at 94 million. We have 300 million of existing uh, uh, debt uh, with local banks in Peru, as a, and that's at, at the end of June. Uh, we have another debt facility which has also been made available, uh, and we've drawn down another 60 million on that uh, in the last couple of months. Um, we've also executed some hedges. Um, hedging is not something we normally do, but we felt, uh, given the situation with the permit and the fact that we were constructing. Uh, the Mara Rosa mine in Brazil, that it was prudent to actually bring some hedges in. And we've hedged production this year, not too much of it, uh, but crucially, we've also done quite a bit next year and in the following few years in Brazil for Mara Rosa. So quite a bit of that's hedged, um, but at some, I think some pretty good prices, um, all the way up to 2,200 for gold. Um, so we think that that's quite prudent financial management. Um, we have paid dividends. We did stop the dividend um, this time last year, just simply to conserve cash, as I said, while we were uh, building the mine and also waiting for the permit. But it is something we would obviously in future like to restore. Uh, it's a familiar side uh, for all of you. Um, you know, we a lot of companies will talk about them being undervalued, but we do believe given what's happened to the company in the last few months, the fact that we've got the permit approval, the fact that we're very close now to first production at Mara Rosa and the fact that we discovered a whole new area, 50 million ounces, as I said, uh, in southern Peru, uh, is something that hasn't really been recognized by the market. Uh, you can see from various metrics, uh, whether it be EV, BIDA or PNAB, that we're somewhat undervalued versus the peer group. Uh, the peer group is a sort of mixture of the UK quoted, but also uh, North American peers uh, in, in gold and silver. Uh, and usually and most of them are, are sort of the mid-sized companies. Uh, we're also generating, should be generating quite a lot of free cash flow uh, over the next few years. And you can see in 2024, that number is nearly the highest um, of all the peer group. We're very hopeful that Mara Rosa, once it's completed uh, and is generating free cash flow, uh, will lead to re-rating uh, and is a real opportunity. ESG is very important to us in the four main areas, safety, um, just to give you an update on that. I think the safety statistics for the first half of this year have been uh, excellent. Historic low in our LTIFR, which is a um, 0.84 times our accident severity index is at a historic low uh, and must be one of the lowest in the industry. 
Uh, as well as that, in building marrow rows, so we've had three million hours with no lost time accidents in San Jose, which is uh, the mine in, in southern Argentina, has had two million hours uh, with no lost time accidents. Um, environmentally, we have a, a, a metric that we developed ourselves called the Eco Score, which brings in uh, a lot of the metrics that you, you would measure from um, year to year in terms of your effect on the environment. Uh, and we've been doing very well on that. Uh, Culture and people is very, very important to us and in terms of provo uh, promoting diversity in, within Peru and Argentina, uh, and also making sure that we don't have uh, too much uh, turnover of our people. Um, community is absolutely essential in terms of, of where we operate, especially in Peru. In Argentina, to be fair, that you know it's the middle of deserts, so there aren't too many communities. But uh, in Brazil and Peru, it's extremely important. 53% of our workforce do come from local communities. Uh, and we've also targeted a lot of um, in, in expenditure over the last few years on local procurement. Um, so ESG wise, you can see on the right hand side our ratings with the, the various ESG agencies, whether it be MSCI or CDP or, or Sustainalytics. Um, we think we're making a lot of progress here and it's still very, very important to us. So this is a summary. Um, Immaculata, as I said, we've got that permit approval. We can now focus on our growth potential in the near term. Uh, it's, you know, our 20 year flagship mine, a lot of upside from the brownfield exploration. Uh, Mara Rosa in Brazil, very much close to completion on time and on budget. Uh, and our new discovery um, in Peru, Roy Rapata, will give, give you the additional medium term growth over the next two, three years. The valuation I hope I've demonstrated is, is certainly not demanding. Um, we have the new CEO, Eduardo Landin. Let me just say a little word on, on him. Uh, Eduardo Landin's been at the company uh, 15 years. He was the COO before he became CEO for 10 years. So he knows Hoshil very, very well. Uh, the CFO, Eduardo Noriega, it's another Eduardo. Um, uh, he became CFO uh, 18 months ago, and he has also had a very long career in Hoshil. So there's been real continuity there. And I'd also like to point you to our Capital Markets Day we're having in November, on the 22nd of November in 2023. So um, please try and um, just do a little bit of disruption to your Thanksgiving Day plans. Uh, on That's a Wednesday before the Thursday uh, and tune in then or at least have a look at the uh, the recording after, after the holiday period. Um, I hope that's been interesting and I'm now going to answer um, some uh, questions that I can see on the left hand side. The first question is asking, can you discuss your actions and gains uh, goals to reduce all in sustaining costs that you're producing mines? Yes, yeah, a very good question. Um, I think the most important thing over the next year or two is this year has been somewhat disrupted because of this, this permit. Uh, we didn't spend as much capex, but also these mines every year need development. You need to develop the mine and prepare it for the next few years. And we weren't able to do that. Uh, because of the permit, we've started doing that again. So you could say this year hasn't been quite such a normal year specifically for Immaculata. Next year, uh, we will probably catch up a little bit of the development still next year, but it'll be a more normal year. So I would like to think the costs uh, will start to come down. Um, now, Palancata is another mine that I mentioned is is starting, uh, is is going to go on care and maintenance over the next few months. That's a high cost mine. So simply taking Palancata uh, out of the equation is going to reduce costs as well. Uh, and of course, bringing in Mara Rosa, $1,000 an ounce is also going to help uh, our all in sustaining costs. So that's that with that, all of that mix um, and the potential to bring in higher grade uh, veins, which we discovered over the last few years at Immaculata, which should help bring costs down, I think should contribute to us being able to control all in sustaining costs over the next few years even in the face of what we've been seeing over the last few years, which is a high degree of cost inflation. Um, the other thing I would mention as well is that, um, and I think I said this during the presentation, that uh, let's see what happens in the Argentina election. That could be a bonus on the cost side if you see a significant devaluation, which all the candidates have promised. Um, so from my point of view, I think there's every opportunity to control and bring costs down. The next question, um, the permitting process in Peru is very long-winded. Is there any hope that the Palancata permit could be speeded up? Um, I think that's another great question. Yes, I think 
due for, to various reasons, this permit for Immaculata took a long time. Firstly, we saw obviously COVID that, uh, I mean, this, this process was about four or five years. Um, and it was, it obviously was impacted by COVID in 2020. Um, a lot of changes within government, of course, the government um, changed in 2021 to, uh, you could argue a slightly more um, anti-mining sort of stance. Um, and it was a very, very, very large area that we were permitting at Immaculada. And I think the combination of all those things uh, uh, led to some of the delays. With Palancata or with the Roy Rapata deposit, it's a much smaller area that we are um, that we will be permitting. Uh, so I think that's the first thing. That's that's very important. Secondly, we have uh, we've collated all the work streams on environmental and and the permitting work streams into being supervised by just one con contractor or consultant, which is Orsenko, which people may have heard of as a very well known. Um, and we're also doing quality control. We'll have another consultant just making sure that we're putting together the best possible documents. So I think there's a lot of learnings we can take from this process. Um, the government as well have made quite a large commitment over the last few months, especially since there was a change of government last uh, December, uh, to try and, uh, to try and um, quicken up this process and streamline the permitting process. Uh, especially when we're talking about something that's right next door to where we're already mining. Um, but I think that's something we're very aware of, aware of uh, and probably also informs why we're, we're being reasonably conservative with that sort of three year, two to three year timeline. But those work streams have already started and did start three or four months ago. I hope that's answered your question. Um, the next question is, can you speak to expected dividend and repurchases for 2023 and 24? Well, I think I mentioned we did stop the dividend uh, a year ago, really just to conserve cash. Uh, the board felt that given that we were to undertaking at that time, and you know, 200 million build uh, at Mara Rosa, uh, and given that the permitting situation was certainly deemed to be somewhat uncertain, that to pay a dividend out probably uh, uh, would not was not a prudent use uh, of our balance sheet. Um, I think we've always said, and we have a history since 2016 of paying dividends. Uh, we've always said we'd like to, and I'm sure our board, when they meet again uh, after our results in February, March, uh, they'll consider the ability of ourselves to pay cash. I suspect a lot will depend on uh, the level of free cash flow, um, how much left we have to build at Mara Rosa, how that's going. I know it looks at the moment like, like it's going very well. Um, but I think broadly in the long term, you know, the company has always said that it would like to pay some sort of dividend. Thank you very much. Um, if you have any more questions, please get in contact with me. Or if you want to set up a meeting, um, I think I've put the, the times when I'm available. Um, thank you very much for attending and um, hope to speak to you.